Hi there. Today I'd like to dive really deep into health challenges and wellness. I'm Anita Morjani and welcome to my show. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I was supposed to die of end stage cancer 13 years ago, but here I am today. So anyway, um, having done all these videos and written all these books, the most common letter that I still seem to receive from people, even though I have spoken about this topic um, in quite a few videos, but the most common letter I seem to receive is from people who are still dealing with physical illnesses, physical challenges. And people still write to me and say that um, they are dealing with cancer and it's metastasizing and so on. So now um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't actually like talking about cancer as a topic because I believe that the fear of cancer is a bigger epidemic than cancer itself. I actually don't think cancer is what we have been led to believe. So for many, many reasons, I don't actually like even using the word cancer. But many times I'm forced to use it because this is how it's presented to me. So I want to take a deeper dive into this subject and clear up some of the things that um, I believe and also bring some clarity to my message in the hope that it will bring clarity to you if you are dealing with physical challenges and physical illnesses that have been labeled as being terminal or serious or, or, what, or life threatening and so on. So first of all, um, I want to start by saying that our medical systems are not geared towards taking you to wellness because their focus is on eradicating illness. So it's important to understand this, that eradicating illness and focusing on wellness are two different things. And I'm going to explain more about that. But I want to repeat that, that eradicating illness and focusing on wellness are two different things. And this is because when your focus is on eradicating illness, your focus is on the illness. It's the focus is on looking for illness, examining the body with the purpose of finding illness. Whereas when your purpose is on focusing on wellness, your focus is on increasing wellness, very different focus, very different energy. And as I will explain to you in a little while, energy is so important in this whole equation of wellness. It's very, very important to feel energetically well. So, now, I also want to tell you that I'm not asking you to stop your medical treatment or anything like that. If you need to continue and or are too fearful to take other routes or if that is what you believe in, that is fine. But um, I am going to be a little bit provocative in the uh, upcoming information and really tell you where I stand on all of this and total honesty and you can take it or leave it. And if you are someone who is a strong advocate for the medical model, for pharmaceuticals, for the conventional therapies, then probably this video is not for you. And so I would suggest you view some of my other ones. But if you are somebody who has become disillusioned with modern medicine, conventional medicine, when it comes to illness. Now, granted, I believe in that when it's for emergencies, medical emergencies, accidents, I would definitely go to a hospital. But when it's for illnesses, chronic illnesses, long-term illnesses, I'm not a big advocate. But if so, if you are on the same page as me, then this video is for you. And again, if you are not, if you're a strong advocate for conventional therapies for everything, then um, I suggest that this video is not for you. So anyway, so here goes. Um, so first of all, I want to tell you about a letter I received some time ago. Um, and, and it's not one of the recent letters saying, please help me. I'm going through a serious illness. Please help me. The doctor says I'm going to die. No, it was a different letter I received from a lady who said that my, um, my work had helped her tremendously. Um, it helped her change her focus on her body. She had been going through some health challenges. She had what doctors had diagnosed as breast cancer. And she felt that um, following my work and changing her view, changing and giving herself a focus on life had helped her a lot. And she is now completely healed 
from her illness. Her life has purpose, her life has meaning. Now she has a daughter, a grown-up daughter, who is now going through her own fearful diagnosis. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends which way you look at it, um, her husband, so this lady's daughter's husband, is a doctor. And again, this is nothing against doctors, but they have a very different way of looking at things because a doctor's focus is on the trajectory of the illness. So her husband is a doctor and he is reading all her files and, um, and he is interpreting everything to her as a doctor. So now this young woman, um, she wants to believe everything that her mother is telling her. Her mother is telling her that um, you need to do, do this kind of work. You need to get to the bottom of the root cause. Is it suppressed anger? What is it that's causing it? You, you can do energy work, you can do... So her mother is basically giving her all this help and saying, read these books, do all this stuff. But this young woman's husband is giving her statistics and facts and telling her uh, what he perceives as facts and telling her that, oh, the chances of your illness uh, healing are, are only 5%. So we have to do this. We have to go really, really aggressive with the chemotherapy and the radiation. And so he is kind of encouraging her oncologist to go even more aggressive and it's taking a toll on her body. Now the mother is watching this and the mother is horrified because she is seeing her daughter deteriorate. Now my heart goes out to the mother and to the daughter and the daughter is, is fearful of what's happening with her and she's trusting her husband but the husband is fearful and he's trusting in the doctors and he's a doctor himself and this is his training and because it's happening to his own wife he wants the treatment to be as aggressive as possible. So this is a very, very challenging situation. But this situation is what, um, what makes me want to tell you that to be aware that a doctor's focus is on the trajectory of the illness. They mean well, this is their training, they might be really nice people who want to help you, but I'm going to repeat this. A doctor's focus is on the trajectory of the illness, but your focus needs to be on the trajectory of your wellness. And I'm going to repeat that. The doctor's focus is on the trajectory of the illness. Your focus needs to be on the trajectory of the wellness. And here's what I mean by this. The doctor in all their training, the oncologist, they are going to look at the disease as the disease. They're not going to look at you as the whole person and what you can do to reverse the disease. They're not going to take that into consideration as they focus on the disease. Remember, their focus is on the illness, not on the whole person or the wellness. So as they look at that disease, they're going to go through their statistics and they're going to see, okay, this is the natural progression of this disease. But here's where you come in. When you get this wake up call that I have this illness, what happens? You want to do something to stop it on its tracks and reverse it. Now, so this is why I encourage people that you have to come up with a plan. So I would say, number one, come up with a plan of what you are going to do to reverse this. And the title of your plan could be something like taking me from where I am now to optimal wellness. In that plan, you can come up with step-by-step -step ways. And it's not even about defeating, but it is sort of about defeating what the doctors say, but it's actually not that hard to defeat what the doctors say. We're made to believe that what they say, especially if we give our power to them, we're made to believe that what they say is absolute factual truth and we actually take it on as our own prognosis and our own diagnosis, but they don't know you. They don't know the meaning of your life. They don't know what your purpose is. So you have to come up with a plan. And if it was me, this is the kind of plan I would come up with. I would ask myself questions like, okay, where have I repressed anger, for example? Where have I repressed guilt? Or where, do, where have I taken on guilt that is not mine, that is misplaced guilt? 
Where have I suppressed who I am? Things like that. But remember, it's hard also sometimes to work through your own stuff. So I would actually put together a team of people. This is why I want to one day create my own healing sanctuary where this team of people is readily available. But I would put together a team of people who would work with me. They would also suggest dietary changes that would be unique to me. Remember, even dietary changes isn't one size fits all. Some people can um, can do well on raw plant-based food. Others need hot cooked food. So it's not one size fits all. I would put together a team of people that were very supportive of me, of what I needed. And the main thing is to follow what makes me feel inspired, what makes me feel good, what makes me feel empowered. Do not follow what is fearful. So if it makes you fearful when the doctor is telling you that, oh, it's metastasized here and it's now gone to your bone and blah, blah, blah. And then that's where we start to put our focus. And this is what I mean about following, going towards the dark instead of going towards the light. So the fearful side is following this, um, this diagnosis that, oh my God, it's metastasized and there's more spots and there's... Blah, blah, blah. And so we then start to go down that trajectory of trying to uh, trying to figure out why why is this illness there we start to focus on the illness and focus on trying to get rid of the illness but what i'm trying to tell you is focus on the light not the side that makes you feel heavy fearful dark focus on the side that makes you feel inspired come up with the plan um, it can be a seven day plan and then extend it after that to another seven days or a 21 day plan or a three month plan. It has to be unique to you. Uh, so again, the kind of plan that would work with me, I would have a team of people that would help me to guide me to work out a diet or a food plan. Let's not even call it a diet, a food plan that works uniquely for my body um, and for my tastes. Like, what am I, what are the foods I'm eating that could be contributing to the physical symptoms that I'm feeling? Let's remove those temporarily, that kind of thing. What foods can I replace them with? So, but that's only a tiny part of it. I would have someone work with me through the emotional stuff that I'm holding on to. Now, sometimes uh, you, you can't work it out mentally. So I say go energetic, go energetic when you can't work it out mentally. Go with an energy healer, um, someone who is like, um, basically I, I know I know of a few and I will be bringing them on in the next few weeks. Uh, actually next month, I'm traveling in the next few weeks. Next month I will be introducing a few healers on my show who will be available to help you. And so these are people like energy healers, um, physical healers, whatever, to, who will help you to heal energetically. Because sometimes you can say that, oh, I have repressed anger, but you're the one that created the problem. It's very difficult to see your own patterns. It's very difficult to clear your own patterns. And so sometimes if you can work with an energy healer to, who, who can at least clear the blockages that those patterns have created in your body that can then trigger the insights for you to see the patterns that you have been creating to cause that blockage. So in other words, it's the other way around. It's not about figuring out what are my patterns so that I can clear the blockage, but you could attack it the other way and have somebody who is a, um, very good with breaking down blocked energy in your body and have them clear the block en blocked energy. And they will even be able to tell you this energy feels like repressed anger. Where have you been repressing anger? This energy feels like you feel guilty all the time. You're holding on to guilt or you, um, you, you haven't forgiven someone. They can usually identify and that will help you. But in the meantime, what they will be doing is while you're working it out in your head, they'll have at least cleared the block energy. Now, I actually believe very strongly in the effect of energy because we are all connected. If you please watch some of my past YouTube videos, I will speak to you about how I got um, how I got ill, how I got the cancer. I would say it's very much uh, how my energy changed because of my beliefs. 
my beliefs changed my energy, which caused the cancer. I was not prone to it. My family doesn't have it. It's not in my genes. It's not in my DNA. I got it energetically. But so that might sound scary, but you can clear it energetically energetically. So what you are clearing are the energy blocks. You're clearing the energy blocks. And then when you clear the energy blocks, the insights come more clearly. And when the insights come more clearly, you don't recreate those energy blocks. But until the insights come clearly, you may need an energy healer to help you clear the energy. So basically, you set up a protocol where you can also work with coaches to help you clear them emotionally and mentally so that you don't keep recreating the same patterns. And this is the kind of thing I would set up. If I was going through something that a doctor said was terminal and had metastasized, I would put together a team outside of medicine. Whether you choose to continue with the medicine or not is entirely up to you. But remember, don't give them your power because they don't know who you are. And when they give you their trajectory, they have not taken into consideration that you are putting together a plan that takes you from where you are now to optimum wellness. Because your plan is going to reverse and help reverse the illness, which is going to, so you are not going to be one of those statistics because those statistics are based on people who have only gone with the medical protocol and who have not realized that, because remember, most people still don't realize the kind of work that we do. Most people don't look at illness this way as a mind-body connection or an energy blockage. Most people don't. So the statistics are gathered from that. The ones who are doing the miraculous healings, who are defying the statistics, who are not a statistics, are the ones who don't give their power to the medical statistics and the ones who are creating their own wellness plan. So if you get a diagnosis, take it as a wake up call, nothing more. It's a wake up call. So if you're feeling symptoms that are scary and you go see a doctor, you get a diagnosis, that's your wake up call. Now it is time to create your plan to go from where you are now to optimum wellness. And remember your optimum wellness plan also needs to include what is my life's purpose? If I get a clean bill of health right now, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? What is my environment like where I'm living? If I go back to the same environment with the same community and the same people, um, are they, is it, um, am I able to cope with that and handle that? Or is that the cause of me feeling all the emotions that are blocking my energy? You see, for some people, they may, <clears throat> they may not have a purpose. They may be done over here. They may be, maybe they have lost people they loved and they have no reason to stay on in this planet. And so they would be very well justified to leave. And leaving is not losing the battle. It's their time. They're done here. But those people, um, and they may manifest a disease to allow them to leave. But that disease in conventional medicine again becomes a statistic, which you are then being presented with. But you are not that person who is ready to leave. Or if you are, that's fine. But if you are not, then you don't need to take those so-called facts of statistics that are being presented to you by, by the medical community about why you need to have aggressive treatments because you are not that person. So I hope that I've made myself clear. And just to recap, it's about making a plan, taking you from where you are now to optimum wellness. And in that plan, you have to include everything, include, including your purpose for being here and create something that makes you looking forward to living the rest of your life. You have to have a reason to live for. Why do you want to live? You don't want to have a life where you dread going back to the life because that is what caused the illness in the first place. So thank you for listening. And I want to now go into a couple of questions. And I know that I have a couple of questions uh, from last week. And before I go further, I also want to mention that I do do a lot of retreats 
Um, an exciting one coming up is the cruise. And at these retreats, we actually practice energy healing to remove those blockages. So if you're at any of my retreats, we will be doing energy healing. Unfortunately, I don't, uh, I, I don't take appointments one-on-one -on -one outside of the retreats, which is why I like to recommend some of my friends who do it. But it's something you can learn to do yourself. It's not about you need to give your power to an energy healer. I want to be clear about that. The energy healer kind of helps you to get in touch with your own power. That's, so, so I will be putting you in touch with more people like that who can help you. And we will be showing you on some of my future videos. Anyway, um, I would like to um, punch up some, some questions. I think we have one from, that, from somebody who posted on my Facebook during the course of the week. Um, so it's, we have a question from a lady named Sandra Harris, who says, uh, hi, Anita, I enjoy your message and story. I have a question. Why or how is it that some people, for example, you or others who have psychic and our spirit abilities, see angels, hear spirits, have NDEs and many, uh, and most others in fact, don't. How is it fair that they have an inside scoop and their own personal proof of an afterlife and or the existence beyond this, uh, this life in God and heaven, etc.? I struggle with this, with how this is fair. We are all equal and entitled to the same joy and rewards after life. It seems we have, um, it seems some have an upper hand and others who try to connect are not able to. I am on my quest and meditate and read and study, but no matter how much I do or ask, I never have any sense that anyone or anything is out there. What are your thoughts? And I am curious on your opinion on this. Thanks again for all that you share. Okay, that is a great question. Um, so life, so basically there is no uh, choosing. Nobody is forsaken. That's what I'm trying to say. None of you are forsaken. Nobody is being left out. Nobody is not being looked after. And, it, and so my theory for some of the people that feel like yourself, Sandra, that feels that you are trying everything, but it's not coming to you. My sense is that you're already plugged in. And the reason why you don't see it is because it's so natural to you that you are so plugged in. It's so natural to you that you can't see outside of it, but you're looking for something unique or different, or you're looking for something that's not in the shape or form that it is. In other words, you have a mental image of how it should be, but it's presenting itself to you in a different way. So for example, the fact that you are a living, breathing being, the fact that you have the mental ability to differentiate who you are, differentiate yourself from other people and say, I am Sandra, this is how I feel. I feel like it's not fair. That in itself is you having a spiritual experience. That in itself is you, in, it's, it's the spirit you, the higher you expressing itself through you, whether you feel it or not. Now, some people, however, are hypersensitive. And this is not necessarily a good thing. If you are aware that there is something more than this, but you're not like feeling it, seeing it, interpreting it all the time, it allows you to be more grounded. And in many ways, you might be luckier than those who see it all the time. Because those who are distracted by it, because it's there all the time, but if you're distracted by it all the time, it's much, much harder to be grounded and focused. So in fact, being so super sensitive to the signs is actually both a gift and a curse. It's not that the ones who don't notice it, it's not that it's not there. It's not that they're forsaken. It's not that it doesn't happen to them, but it's just that they are less sensitive to the signs that are showing them that they are connected. That's all. And the reason why I believe that their own um, physiology, their own psychological cosmetic makeup is less sensitive to the signs is because their purpose is one of being more grounded. 
because we need people who are more grounded. We need people who are more focused because the ones who are more sensitive to the other side are also the ones who are more creative, but they are also the ones who have a lot of issues with boundaries because we tend to see the spiritual self of everybody, even here in the physical, and we have and we have a lot of trouble having boundaries between them and us. And so people who are super sensitive are terrible with boundaries. They're terrible with looking after themselves. They're terrible with um, receiving or charging their own batteries. They're terrible at making money. They're terrible at detailed administrative work. Most people who are super sensitive to the other side would agree with this. I'm not going to make a blanket statement and say all, but what happens is when our attention is always there, it's not here. The world wouldn't run without you. So the world actually needs more of you, but it doesn't mean you're not connected. It actually means that your purpose is to be more focused and grounded. Many people I work with are exactly like what I'm describing. They are aware of this because they, they know my story is true. They believe it's true. They're aware it's there, but they're not distracted by it all the time. They're not being called by it. And they could very easily say the same thing that I'm not, um, oh, how come I'm not chosen? How come I don't see the messages that you see? How come I don't get the white feathers? I don't get this. But actually they are still being guided all the time and their, um, their fulfillment comes from fulfilling a more grounded purpose. And they are not being called to go and research and channel and look at the other side and interpret messages from the other side. That is not their calling right now. At the time when it is their calling, it will start to happen to them. But again, they are not being uh, forsaken because they are in their own way still being guided to their calling. And in fact, the very absence of those messages is what is keeping them focused on their calling, which is what is keeping the rest of us going because they are the ones that have the longer attention span. What is a longer attention span? It's someone who can stay focused on the now, on the physical for a longer period of time to actually um, be more focused to get the real work done that needs to be done here. Uh, so basically, yeah, you are well needed. Um, you are not forsaken. People like me need people like you, like very, very badly. I wouldn't be able to survive without people who aren't grounded. I really wouldn't. My husband is far more grounded than I am. I wouldn't be able to survive without him and some of the people in my team as well. So just so you know. The, also, I want to throw out one other thing though. In some cases, people don't see the messages and the guidance because they're trying too hard. That very energy of trying too hard, it kind of blocks it. And a third thing just for you to consider um, is that you may have a specific idea or vision of what you want your messages to look like, but they're coming at you, but in a different way. And you're not seeing it because you're trying to look for something else. You know, I often use the analogy, um, if you watch my TED talk, where I, I tell people to look around the room and find something that's blue in color. Then I tell them to close their eyes and then I ask them, what in the room did you, uh, I want you to re recollect everything in the room that was red in color. And people don't remember anything that was red, even though it was right on their, their nose because they were so focused on the blue. So if you are focused on one thing, a message can come at you in a different form and you may not even see it because you're so highly focused. And that's what my flashlight analogy is about as well. When your flashlight is highly focused, then you will only see what your flashlight is focused on. And sometimes you do need to be focused. Grounded people need to be focused. But um, sometimes it's okay to say, I'm going to diffuse the flashlight or turn on the big floodlights and be open to whatever comes my way. So those are the suggestions I have for you. But just remember, you are not forgotten. You are not forsaken. None of these things. You are very much looked after. And in fact, you may be more plugged in than you ever realize. You may be more plugged in than the ones who actually do 
tell you they get messages because you might be taking it so much for granted that you no longer recognize it as something special or different. So thank you for that question. It's a beautiful question, Sandra. And um, I did have one more that I wanted to visit and then I will take a quick look at some of your comments as well. Um, so, and thank you everybody for all the likes and the hearts. And uh, if I had emojis, I would be pushing them up right now so the screen would be filled with them. So we have one uh, also that came in about a week ago, I believed, and I'm not going to say his name. And uh, if we can punch that up, it's a, um, basically, I remember what, what he, ah, here we go. He says, Anita, thank you so much for your message and philosophy. You, you really rock. Thank you. Could you please comment on how gay people can love themselves and be themselves? We are taught that we're sinners and partake in evil and, and can be fired or evicted for being ourselves. Now, I always feel so sad for those of you who are going through things being treated this way and, um, Sometimes I'm at a loss for words because I can't believe that in the 21st century we could still use religion to make people fearful of being who they are. Um, it, it's, it is really sad and I have people writing to me different things, whether you're gay, whether you're transgendered, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Even people who are just um, wanting to be different, like do something different in their life. and they tell me that they feel guilt, like religious guilt, um, or their religion makes them feel guilty. Guilt is an absolutely useless emotion. I want you to go back and watch my video from last week. Um, guilt is misplaced. It's very different from regret or remorse, very different from remorse. Remorse is when you truly feel you have hurt someone and you want to make it up to them. Guilt is completely misplaced. It is wrong. It is a way that, uh, you can be manipulated if people make you feel guilty. Um, so basically what I want to tell anybody that feels guilty for being who they are, no matter what it is, whether you're gay, uh, straight, transgendered, non-binary, whether you are a different race, color, whatever it is, whatever it is, I want you to know there is a purpose, a reason why you're here. You are loved just because you exist. Get in touch with your own energy. If someone is going to fire you, it means there's something better waiting for you. I want you to know that. People have asked me and said they're afraid to come out because they're afraid of the repercussions. I think it's highly unfair that gay people have to come out at all because straight people don't have to come out and say, hey, I'm coming out of the closet to say I'm straight. Why are there double standards? So don't even feel you have to come out. Just be who you are. If people can't accept you, it's actually their thing, not yours. Just be who you are. Be the love that you are. The only thing that matters is love. Love heals everything. Our world doesn't have enough of it right now. Our world, um, our politicians, our, our media has made us so divided that we really need all the love we can, we can have. So all you have to do is just spread the love. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you stand for. Do it in the name of love. It doesn't matter what religion you are or aren't or if you're atheist. Whatever you do, do it in the name of love and not fear. And I always go back to this one, um, th this one value I live by whenever I'm doing anything. Why am I doing it? Is it out of love or fear? Just that one question can take you back to yourself. Whatever you do, do it in the name of love. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And real quick, again, before I go, I am leaving on a trip tonight for a couple of weeks. So I won't be here next week. I'm going to see my mom in India. It's a quick rush trip. And after that, I have to go to the East Coast for a couple of events. Um, so I'm going to see my beautiful mom, who's 91 years old. And a couple of you have asked me who these guys are. Um, so both of these guys, I just wanted to feature them because they were given to me as presents at an event actually in Bristol in the UK. When I did my one day event, it happened to be 
to be my birthday. And both of these were given to me with beautiful letters, which actually made me cry. And one of them was by a gentleman who was guided by Wayne Dyer. And the other one was a lady who said her mother made this and it was her most valuable possession. And that made me cry because I felt your mother made it. Oh my God, I feel so honored that you gave it to me. You shouldn't have, but I mean, so it's close to my heart. And so I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, I sometimes feel so blessed and so lucky at the outpouring of love, but I just want you to know that I feel the same for every single one of you. And I can't wait to see you at my upcoming events. And I can't wait to see you in my future videos. And I will be bringing on people like energy healers to talk about how you can help yourself energetically. If you can't work things out mentally and emotionally, you can still release the blocked energy. Thank you all for tuning in and I will see you all really soon. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.